Good morning and blessed be the name of the Lord. We greet you in the precious name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Um, we're here to worship the Lord on this Sunday morning, on the first day of the week, uh, the resurrection morning, as they would say. Uh, an opportunity to praise the Lord, an opportunity to worship, an opportunity to give Him glory and honor and thanksgiving. And um, bear with us as we check our audio, make sure our signal is going correctly, everything seems to be fine. Um, turn all, all the music off and so on. So we seem to be going good. We hope it's not distorted. So we're so glad after after a week, <clears throat> the volume is fine. After about a week, we had issues. We weren't able to broadcast. But we are thankful to God that He's able to work things out, that this morning we could come and worship the Lord and praise the Lord and give Him glory and give Him honor. I just want to make sure that we are recording. Hallelujah. Okay, praise God. Amen. So, blessed be the name of the Lord. So, we like to stand this morning. Shall we stand this morning? As we want to turn to the book of Psalms, Psalm 6 0. The book of Psalms, Psalm 6 0. <clears throat> Psalms 6 0. Praise God. Amen. O God, what thou hast cast us off, thou hast scattered us, thou hast been displeased. O turn thyself to us again, thou hast made the earth to tremble, thou hast broken it, heal the breaches thereof, for it shaketh. Thou hast showed thy people hard things, thou hast made us to drink the wine of ast astonishment, thou hast given a banner to them that fear thee, that it may be displayed because of the truth, Selah, that thy beloved may be delivered. Save with thy right hand and hear me. God hath spoken in his holiness. I will rejoice. I will divide Shechem and meet out the valley of Shokot. Gilead is mine and Manasseh is mine. Ephraim also is the strength of mine head. Judah is my lawgiver. Moab is my washpot. Over Edom will I cast out my shoe. Philistia, triumph thou because of me. Who will bring me into the strong city? Who will lead me into Edom? Will thou... Will not thou, O God, which hast cast us out, and thou, O God, which dost not go out with our, our enemies, give us help from trouble, for vain is the help of man. Through God we shall do valiantly, for he is that shall tread down our enemies. May God add a blessing to the reading of his word, shall we pray. Our eternal Father and great God of heaven, we come before you, Lord, humbly before you, with a broken and contrite heart, Lord, and Lord, Lord, weighed down by the things of the world and uh, that are pressing upon us, the squeeze, weighed down by, Lord, decisions to be made, whether we should do this or whether we should do that or <clears throat> which direction to go in, Lord. We just want to rest all these things at the door, Lord, and walk away from it and come into your presence, knowing that you're able to take care of all things in our lives, Lord. Our mistakes are many, Lord. Our failings are many, and Lord, we probably do things that are not, dis not pleasing in your sight, Lord, but forgive us. And as we walk this narrow way, we walk with the light of the Lord Jesus Christ, the light that shines before us, our Lord and Savior. And this morning, O oh Lord, we ask you that you come down, forgive us for our trespasses, our sins, our faults, our feelings, our mistakes. Come down amongst us in a mighty way, O great God of heaven. O eternal one, sweep upon your people, those who are gathered here. For you say where two or three are gathered in your name, there you would be in the midst. Those who are out in the internet, O Lord God, sweep over their soul this morning. Those who are on Facebook that would be joining us, sweep over their souls. Bless them and anoint them, Lord, and Lord, accept our praises and our worship as we sit at your feet to look unto your face to worship you. To praise you, Lord Jesus. Come amongst us, Lord, in a way that we have never felt before. Grant it, we pray. Bless, O oh God, those that are listening, Lord, the believers on all over the world that are listening. Those in the even night -like tabernacle who might be in service today, Lord, bless them. Bless the precious pastor, their brother Sankey, Lord, raise him up, Lord, strengthen up. Continue touching his body and bring forth his healing. 
Bless our sister Evangeline, his wife also, Lord God, who has stood with him all these years. Bless, Lord, the elders in the church and the deacons and all other pastors who are listening at this time, Lord. Bless them. Now we yield ourselves to your Holy Spirit. Come down, Lord, we pray, in a mighty way, in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Oh, we're together again. Just praising the Lord. We together again in one accord. Something good is about to happen. Something good is in store. We together again. Just praising the Lord. We together again. Just praising the Lord, we together again, in one accord. Something good is about to happen, something good is in store. We together again, just praising the Lord, one more time. Oh, we together again. Just praising the Lord, we together again, in one accord. Something good is about to happen, something good is in store, we together again. Oh, praising the Lord, Amen. Praise God, we are together again once more. There's always, uh, you know, a great opportunity, a great privilege to set aside some time to worship Him, to praise Him, to give Him glory, to give Him honor. He's our God. He's our Savior. He's our Lord. He's our King. Amen. And He's coming soon. One of these glad mornings. Amen. He is coming soon. Amen. Let's sing Him number 198 in the Only Belief Songbook. Uh, He's coming soon. Amen. Him number 198 in the Only Belief Songbook. In these the closing days of time, what joy the glorious hope affords, that soon, O wondrous truth sublime, he shall reign King of kings and Lord of lords. In these the closing days of time, what joy the glorious hope affords, that soon, O glorious truth sublime, he shall reign, King of kings and Lord of lords. And he is coming soon, he's coming very soon. With joy we welcome his returning. It may be more, it may be night or noon. We knew he's coming soon. The signs around in earth and air Oh, painted on the starless sky God's faithful witnesses declare That the coming of the Savior draweth nigh And He is coming soon He's coming very soon With joy we welcome His returning it may be morn, it may be night or noon, we know He's coming soon. The dead in Christ who need us lie, in countless numbers all shall rise. When through the portals of the sky He shall come to prepare a paradise Oh, He is coming soon He's coming very soon With joy we welcome His returning It may be more Maybe night or noon we know He's coming soon. And we who live in yet remain, 
caught up shall meet our faithful Lord. This hope we cherish not in vain, but we comfort one another by His will. And He is coming soon, He's coming very soon. With joy we welcome His returning. It may be morn, it may be night or noon, we know He's coming soon, and He is coming soon, He's coming very soon, with joy we welcome His returning, it may be morn, it may be night or noon, we know He's coming soon. Amen. Blessed be the name of the Lord. What a promise for us this morning. Hallelujah, that we who are alive and remain shall be caught up to meet our blessed Lord. That is our hope this morning. We who are alive and remain, that's you, my brother. That's you, my sister. You who are alive and remain to the coming of the Lord. So press forward, amen. Press forward, amen. The time is at hand. Hallelujah. Oh, you who are alive and remain, amen. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Just want to, I'm looking for a song. Sing the wondrous, uh, amen. Sing the wondrous love of Jesus. Sing His praises. Let's see if we could find that. Sing the wondrous love of Jesus. I'm trying to get the song number. Amen. Hallelujah. So we just love Him. We just praise Him. We just thank Him. We just worship Him. E many many men. I think it's hymn number one sixty six. Amen. Praise God. Let's sing the song hymn number one sixty six. Oh blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. <clears throat> hymn number one sixty six, only believe songbook. When we all get to heaven. Amen. We want to sing the wondrous love of Jesus. We want to sing His mercy and His grace. In His mansions bright and blessed, He is prepared for us a place. We who are alive and remain, caught up to meet the Lord in the, in the air, shall be taken away in this wonderful place that He has prepared for us, a marriage supper, and then coming back upon you to live, O oh, glorious reign with Jesus. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hymn number 166, Only Believe Songbook. Sing the wondrous love of Jesus. <clears throat> oh, sing the wondrous love of Jesus. Sing His mercy and His grace. In the mansions, bright and blessed, He'll prepare for us a place. And when we all, all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be when we all see Jesus. We will sing and shout the victory. Oh, while we walk the pilgrim path, we clouds me over, shed the sky. But when traveling days are over, not a shadow, not a sign. Oh, when we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be when we all see Jesus. We will sing a shout of victory. Oh, let us then be true and faithful, trust in serving every day. Oh, just one glimpse of Him in glory will the toils of life repay. Oh, when we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be oh, when we all see Jesus. We will sing and shout victory. 
go on what do the prize before us soon his beauty will be whole soon the pearly gates will open we shall tread the streets of gold and we all Oh, get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be, oh, when we all see Jesus, we will sing and shout the victory, many, many men, oh, blessed be the name of the Lord, amen, when we all get to heaven. And what is heaven? That new Jerusalem, that new city, amen, that mansions that He's building for us in glory. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. Oh, thank you, Jesus. What a promise for those who are alive and remain. And if you have to move on to meet the Lord, then you'll rise up in the resurrection, the first resurrection. Oh, hallelujah. Somewhere when He calls you, you will answer. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, when my Savior calls, I would answer. When He calls my name, oh, I'll hear. Amen. If, he, if you are alive and remain, when He calls your name, you'll be caught up to meet Him in the air. If you pass on to meet the Lord, resting until he comes when he calls your name hallelujah glory to god you'll be rise up from wherever you're sleeping and raise up lord in the in the beauty of his resurrection oh hallelujah oh when he called my name i will answer when he called my name i will hear and when he called my name i will answer i'll be somewhere listening for my name I will be somewhere praying somewhere listening somewhere oh, listening for my name I will be somewhere praying somewhere oh, listening somewhere listening for my need and if my heart is right when he calls me and if my heart is right i will hear and if my heart is right when he calls me i'll be somewhere who oh, listening for my name I will be somewhere, oh, praying somewhere, oh, listening somewhere, oh, listening for my name. I will be somewhere, oh, praying somewhere, listening somewhere, oh, praying for my name. And if my robe is white, I will hear, and if my robe is white, I will hear, and if my roof is right, I will hear, I'll be somewhere, who oh, listening for my need, I will be somewhere, who oh, praying somewhere, listening somewhere, who oh, listening for my need, I will be somewhere, who oh, listening somewhere, Listening somewhere, who listening for my name. Amen. Blessed be the name of the Lord. What a promise. Amen. I'll be somewhere listening, somewhere praying, somewhere waiting for him to call me, whether you are alive and remain. Oh, hallelujah. You might, between six and nine, who knows? Oh, hallelujah. You might be up drinking a cup of coffee, but you're meditating and you hear your name called. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. Call to the resurrection. Call to the rapture. Call to hear the voice of the archangel. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. Let's sing this chorus. Know ye not, know ye not, ye are the temple. Know ye not, ye are, know ye not, ye are the temple. Know ye not, ye are the temple. Ye are the temple of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Full of power, full of grace, full of glory. Oh, yes, I know I am the temple. Amen. Walk in seven steps to perfection. Let's sing that song. Uh, we sing, know ye not, know ye not, ye are the temple. And then we'll sing, full of power, full of grace, full of power, full of glory. And then, um, 
um, walking up seven steps to perfection. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Oh, no, we not, no, we not the other temple. Oh, no, we not, no, we not the other temple. Oh, no, we not, no, we not the other temple. He had a temple of the Holy Ghost. Oh, full of grace, full of power, full of glory. Oh, full of grace, full of power, full of glory. Oh, full of grace, full of power, full of glory. He had a temple of the Holy Ghost. And walking up seven steps to perfection. Walking up seven steps to perfection. Walking up seven steps to perfection. Receive the fullness of the Holy Ghost. No, we not. And do we not know we not he had a temple? Oh, no, we not know me not he had a temple. Oh, no, we not know we not he had a temple. He had a temple of the Holy Ghost. Amen. <clears throat> Blessed be the name of the Lord. He had a temple of the Holy Ghost. And what does, I think it's 2 Corinthians chapter 6, 16 to 18 say? Oh, no, he not yet a temple. The Holy Ghost dwelleth in you. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. That Holy Spirit lives in you. Amen. And what he wants to do, he wants to walk in you. He wants to talk in you. He wants to dwell and live in you. Amen. That's what he wants to do. And to make you his sons and daughters. Then you become sons and daughters of the Almighty God. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. So this morning we want to transition over to the word of the Lord. <coughs> Amen. Blessed be the name of the Lord. We want to um, transition. Let's sing this song, Touching Jesus. Touching Jesus is all that really matters. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, touching Jesus is all that really matters. And your life will never be the same. There's only one way to touch Him. Just believe when you call on His name. And touching Jesus is all that really matters. And your life will never be the same. There's only one way to touch Him. Just believe when you call on His name. Amen. Hallelujah. So greetings once again in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, those on the internet, those on Facebook and those who are here, amen. The Bible says where two or three are guarded in his name, there he is in the midst of dwell. And you might be in your house, you might be in your living room, you might be in your dining room, you might be in your kitchen, wherever you might be at this time listening to this internet broadcast. Or you might raise up the archives and listen to this word of the Lord. But God bless you. He said, where two or three are guarded in my name, there you are in the midst. Hallelujah. There he comes down to bless. He has promised it. This is his word. He has never failed his word. Amen. <clears throat> Blessed be the name of the Lord. So this morning we like to, uh, you know, I like to read uh, at least four scriptures. So this morning we like to read uh, four portions of scriptures. Amen. The first portion of scriptures is in Genesis chapter 1. Genesis chapter 1 verses 1 and 2. Genesis chapter 1 verses 1 and 2. Hallelujah. Ah, praise the name of the Lord. 
Genesis chapter 1. Praise God, verses 1 and 2. Um, then also Job chapter 9, verses 1 to 10. Job chapter 9, verses 1 to 10. Job chapter 9, verses 1 to 10. Then Colossians chapter 2, verses 9 to 13. Colossians chapter 2, 2 verses 9 to 13. And St. John, St. John chapter 14, verses 7 to 12. St. John chapter 14, verses 7 to 12. So let's read from Genesis chapter 2. Sorry, Genesis chapter 1, verses 1 to 2. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Just read it once more again. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. So right there you see God was there before the beginning. Verse 2. And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. I'd like to read Job the book of Job, chapter 9, verse 1 to 10. Book of Job, chapter 9, verse 1 to 10. Then Job answered and said, I know it is so of a truth. How should man be just with God? If he will contend with him, he cannot answer him. One of a thousand. He is wise in heart, that's God, and mighty in strength, who had hardened himself against him, and had prospered, which removeth the mountains, and they know not, which overturned them in the, his anger, which shaketh the earth out of her place, and the pillars thereof, which commanded the sun, and it riseth not, and sealeth up the stars, which alone spreadeth out the heavens, and tread upon the waves of the sea, which maketh Actorius, Orion, and Pleiades, and the chambers of the south, which doth great things pass, fa pass finding out, yea, and wonders without number. Now I could go on and read so many different scriptures about this great God. Amen. Who he is. This great almighty one that created the heavens and the earth in the beginning. But there are so many scriptures, but I just want to concentrate and see how it ties into us. So let's read from Colossians. The book of Colossians, chapter 2. We like to read from verse 9 to 13. For in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. And who is that? The Lord Jesus Christ. And he are complete in him, which is the head of all principality and power, in whom he are circumcised with a circumcision made without hands, in putting off the body of the sins of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ, buried with him in baptism. Wherein also he had risen with him through faith of the operation of God, which had raised him from the dead. And you being dead in your sins and the uncircumcision of your flesh, had he quickened together with him, being forgiven all your trespasses. Amen. So we see Christ is the all fullness of the Godhead and we are in him. Let's read the Book of St. John, chapter 14, reading from 7 to 12. <clears throat> Jesus speaking, verse 7. If he had known me, he should have known my father also. And from henceforth he know him and have seen him. Amen. Have known him and also seen him. Philip said unto him, Lord Jesus, show us the father and it suffices us. Jesus said unto him, Have I been so long time with you, and you, has not, you have not known me, Philip? He that had seen me had seen the Father. And how sayest thou then, Show us the Father? Believest thou not that I am in the Father, and the Father in me? The words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me. He doeth the works. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father in me, or else believe me for the very work's sake. 
Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that believeth on me, the works that I do, shall he do also. And greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto my Father. Amen. May God add a blessing to the reading of his word, shall we pray. Hallelujah. Father God, we have read your word, Lord, and they are mighty, they are powerful. And for the topic, Lord God, I'm going to talk about by your grace this morning. There are so many scriptures that I could go back and forth, but Lord, and show according to the word, Lord God, Lord, uh, your, this topic that I'm going to preach on, Jesus. Come down in your glory and your might and your anointing. Anoint your servant that he could speak the word with boldness, to speak the word that you would want said unto your people. Lord, bring the people to hear this word, Lord, wherever they may be on Facebook and on the internet, Lord. Bring them, Lord, to hear this word. And if they come in the archives also, bless them. Now, Lord God, you come out of the pages of this word we just read. The same God that created the heavens and the earth in the beginning. That same Lord Jesus, Father, come forth and bless your people. Take the words and quicken it to your people. Touch your unworthy, unprofitable servant. And help him, Lord God, as I stand in the gap for the people. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen and amen and amen. So this morning for a, a title, Who is God? For a title, Who is God? Who is this great eternal one? Who is God? That's the title. And for a subject this morning, Jesus Christ is always the subject of the whole New Testament, the Old Testament. Jesus Christ, creator of heaven and earth. And what is our inspiration? Why do we want to understand who is God? Because we want to know who He is, how He acts, what He's talking about, and what is His plan for us. So our inspiration is knowing who God is and His plans for us. So our title, Who is God? Amen? So for those who have come on the internet for the first time, and have come in our website for the first time, uh, we are broadcasting from Orlando, Florida, United States of America, from the Bride Age Christian Fellowship, of which uh, the Lord has made me the pastor and the minister. Amen. And we are so glad that you could come and join us in fellowship. We are so glad you allow us to come into your living room, dining room, wherever it may be, church or wherever it may be, or Pakistan or India or wherever it be. We are thankful that you could listen to the word of the Lord. We pray that what is said today would be a blessing unto you. So uh, you would say, well, what do you believe, Brother C. Prasad? Well, we have a, a video on, uh, if you go to our website, www.bridehchristianfellowship.org, there on the missions, you see a video, 55 minutes, 11 seconds, of a video that explains to you the details of what we believe, uh, what, we, what, we, um, uh, what we are looking for, and you'll also find my testimony of the Lord called me to minister unto His people. Amen. So what we have identified in this last days, we have looked across the land and we want to see who is the messenger for this age. If you look in Revelation chapter 1, 2 and 3, you'd see they identify seven golden candlesticks. And these seven golden candlesticks represent seven church ages. And these seven church ages were named. And they were named, um, they were named after seven churches, literal churches, that were in Asia Minor at the time of the Apostle John. They were named there. And the reason that they were named um, is because every one of these church ages had a characteristic, amen, of the seven church ages that was to come for the Gentile. Now, these are Gentile church ages. Gentile church ages, not Jewish. Gentile church ages in which the Lord Jesus Christ is using Paul and ministers, all the ministers and seven church ages to bring the people to him. To prepare a Gentile bride. The Lord Jesus Christ is preparing a Gentile bride before he goes back to the Jews. And he's preparing a Gentile bride through these seven church ages. And these seven church ages are Ephesus. These seven church ages are Ephesus. And, um, these are seven church ages as were in Asia Minor. And the, and the name of these churches were Ephesus, of which Paul was the, we have identified Paul as a messenger. And Smyrna, and we have identified Smyrna as uh, Irenaeus was a messenger. We, we're going through history now. We're talking about the history of the churches, the history of the church, the history of this mess, uh, the, the, the Bible, the history 
of um, the gospel coming to the Gentiles. And then the, mess, the next messenger was Martin, and he came to the, message, to, the, to the church age of Pergamos. And the next messenger was Columbia, he came to the age of Tyrateria. Next messenger was Luther, he came to the age of Sardis, and Luther came against the Roman Catholic Church, and Luther preached that just shall live by faith. He was a reformer. And then Wesley, amen, Wesley was a messenger to the Philadelphia Church Age, and he preached, he preached sanctification, the Holy Spirit. And of course, after that, from there, transition over there to the Pentecostal Church Age in 1906. And we have identified in this last age a messenger. We have, saw, we have seen, we have seen um, uh, Billy Graham, we have seen Oral Roberts, we could see many messengers, a mighty men of God in this age from 1906. We see uh, Brother Seymour and others from 1906. But we want to identify the messenger that brought a message specifically for those who live in this age. Amen? According to Revelation chapter 3 verses 14 to 22. That's what we're looking for. We're looking for a messenger. And we found this messenger. And his name is Brother William Marion Branham. And he preached all over the world. There was almost, I don't know, hundreds of thousands of people in his message. And I mean in his, in his, um, his meetings. He went to Durban, South Africa and India and England and Fra all different places where he preached this word of God. An angel came, came to him and an angel appeared uh, in 1933 while he was baptizing the 17th person in the river Ohio. Uh, in America here and what happened there was a voice that came from heaven a star came down from heaven and the, uh, uh, thousands of people saw it and the voice came out of that star and said as John the Baptist for on the first coming of Christ your message will for on the second coming so brother William Marion Branham fulfilled Revelation chapter 10 verse 7 he also fill, fulfilled uh, Malachi chapter 4 verse 5 and 6 he also fulfilled that messenger of Revelation chapter 3 verse 14 to 22 Amen. So we have identified this message. Now I can't go into details and tell you more about this messenger. It will take a lot of time, but and we don't have the time today. But as I mentioned, go to the website um, and uh, on the missions you see a 55 minute for 11 seconds video. You could explain a little more if you need to know more about Brother Branham and his message and or uh, the 1200 plus messages as he preached. It's an audio and some is and uh, you may want to. Our videos go to the website www.branham.org and there you'll find Brother Branham messages. Uh, this uh, uh, website is run by his two sons, Brother Billy Paul Branham and Brother Joseph Branham, and they're taking Brother Branham message to the world. So there you'll find a lot of Brother Branham message. Now you say, Well, Brother C. Prasad, I could go on the internet, there's so many things said against him. Well, you know what? No man is perfect, that's the first thing, and number two. There's only one perfect and one who never made a mistake and that's the Lord Jesus Christ. Moses made a mistake. Uh, Elijah made a mistake. E Elisha made a mistake. Uh, do you remember Peter? He denied the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? All these men, uh, you know, Matthew was a liar and a thief, a tax collector. And yet, you know, um, I mean, if you, if you go to, if they put in Matthew's life, St. Matthew, the, who wrote the book, and they put it in, 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 in Google, and they put his life there. What is the first thing you see? He was a crook. <laughs> That's the first thing you see. But you, they would fail to see, uh, people fail to see what God has done with the man. And it's the same thing with Brother Branham. There are a lot of people would, would say all sorts of things about him. But what I would say to you is that take his life, take his message, take the word that he spoke and compare it to everybody else. Take the miracles, the signs and wonders and compare it to anybody since 1906. Compare it. And you'll see what I'm talking about. Amen. You'll see where he, his ministry slides into the world. We don't worship a man. You know, just like you have a sign. Wherever you, you at, uh, city you're living in, you want to get, I'm here in, in um, Florida. So there's a sign. You want to get to Disney World. Let's just say Disney World. There's a sign at the corner. It's, it's a, it says, that, that way to Disney World. Five miles. Amen. A big, beautiful sign. Mickey Mouse and lovely, pretty uh, colors. We don't go to, you, you don't want to go to that sign and sit down and say, oh my, you know, uh, the mayor, uh, who is the mayor of the city, Dyer or whatever his name, oh, he built such a beautiful sign and Walt Disney make sure they had a beautiful airs of Mickey Mouse. Oh, we'll say, let's sit down at the sign, let's take out lunch and let's eat and let's look up to the sign. No. You want to get to Disney World. You want to take your picnic and your food and, and all that stuff to Disney World. You want to see Mickey Mouse there. 
Amen? So you don't stick at the sign. And that's how we look at it. We want to follow the sign that the prophet William Aaron Branham pointed out. He pointed out that's the way to the rapture. That's the way to perfection. That's the way to get translation faith for your body to be changed. That's the way for your body to be healed totally. And that's what we follow. So we make a lot of quotes out of Brother Branham's message. And why do you do that, Brother Sipa? I said, well, in the days of Brother Branham, when he spoke the word of God, what happened? The angel of the Lord went behind that word that he spoke and went to the people. There were signs, wonders, miracles. People's lives were changed. Why? Because of the words that this man spoke. It was not his words. It was the word of the angel of the Lord, the angel of the covenant. So if we <coughs> quote the same words, if we speak the same thing, if we bring it the same way to the people, then God is obligated. Amen. And, and, and you could challenge anyone on that. You could say, Lord, Brother Branham spoke those words, and I know you're obligated to come behind that word and vindicate it to the people. And that's what I believe this morning, that when I read these quotes, it will come be the angel of the Lord, the angel of the covenant, the Holy Spirit, the pillar of fire, the Lord God himself will come behind his words and vindicate it to you in your life. Amen. So it's not my message. I don't have a message on my own. All I could do is to take what the prophet say and bring it to the people. And that's what the prophet told us to do. He said, young man, take this and message and sweep it to the coming of the Lord. We are a five minister in gifts of Ephesians 4, 11 to 13. Amen. We are taking the prophet message as apostles and prophets and pastors and teachers and evangelists and bringing it to the people so that they will come to perfection according to Ephesians 4, 11 to 13. Amen. And that's what we believe. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. So, I, so you'll find me reading a lot of quotes. And those are the quotes that's going to tell you exactly what the prophet said and what the angel of the Lord tell the prophet to say. Amen. Blessed be the name of the Lord. So uh, we are looking at who is God? Who is this great supernatural being that existed before, before the beginning? We just read this here. We just read in Genesis chapter 1. We just read in Gen Genesis chapter 1. It said, uh, in the beginning... God created the heavens and the earth. So right away you can see that God was there before the beginning. Amen? So there were, here is this spot in time that is the beginning. And when did the beginning start? And we'll talk about that in a little bit. But before that beginning, way before that, God, eternal spirit, and Jesus himself, call it what? Call him Father. Amen? Father. So Father God existed. Now you know something? He was not even a God then. Amen? Because he had nothing to worship him. Before the beginning, he, they, he was not even God. Because there was nothing to worship. God is an object to worship. Amen? So, so what, we want to, what we want to do, and what is a very desire for heart as ministers, is that peop, for, people to, for believers to understand who this God is. He is not a man. Although he came down as a man, this supernatural God that dwell in the body of Jesus Christ is, was not a man. The man was just a vessel. That corporeal body that you see, and you see is the Lord Jesus Christ. That, that what dwelleth in him was not a man. That who dwelleth in him was supernatural God. Amen. And I try to explain to my grandchildren, my, my children when they were small, God is like, they, they like to read science fiction. They, they, what is the name of this show? Star Trek? No, Star Trek. Is it Star Trek? Yes, whatever. That there are these sentient beings that that uh, that know all these things and could move around and have power. To, you know, so I try to explain them. It's a little bit like that, but far beyond that. That God is like an alien. Amen. He is out there. He he is sitting out there, and we want to know who he is. Really, we want to know about him. Amen. So let's read here, Jehovah Jireh, Cleveland, Tennessee, Sunday the 6th of January, 1957, paragraph E19. Quote, Brother Branham, Here some time ago I read in a newspaper where a little boy eat the erasers of the pencils at school. His mother didn't think what to think of it. She found him one day sitting on the porch eating a pedal off a bicycle. It was rubber. She take him down to the clinic and have him to have him examined. And the doctor, after a thorough examination, said, The little boy is lacking sulfur. He lacks sulfur in his body. Now, therefore, they had to give him shots for it. Now, look, 
if there's something in here calling for sulfur, something in your heart, first there's got to be a sulfur out there to call. Before there can be a sulfur, something in here calling for that sulfur. In other words, the whole glorified, I hope you don't get tangled up. But before there can be a creation, there had to be a creator to create that creation. And as, a long, and as long as you are here tonight to be healed by God, by divine healing, there has to be a fountain open somewhere or you will never have that desire. You got to be something. There got to be something. If there's something calling for healing from God, there got to be a God to answer it. That's right. The Indians, when we met them here, they fell and worshipped the sun. In Africa, they worship idols. What is it? There's something... They are human beings. There is a call to God. Now the main thing is to let the Indian know who God is. Let the hot and tot know who God is. And to let you know what healing is. That's the main thing. Go get in the right channel. And then you can do it. And God has given it freely to every one of you. It's yours by divine purpose. Amen. End of quote. So what you're saying is that by you desiring to serve God, Show that there's a God out there. By you designed to worship your creator, show there's a creator out there. Everybody's bowing down to idols. The Hindu bow down to so many idols and, and different Buddhists and, and all these kind of, even the Roman Catholic ch Church bow down to all these idols and so on. Why? Because there's something inside of them that is crying out for a creator to worship. They want to worship. Man was formed to worship God. Amen? But who is this God that we want to worship? Who is it? Amen. What is this God that we're talking about? Amen. So I'm just going to give you a summary and I'm going to read it out of the prophet message. Amen. Now this God was there and think about, let's, let's take a journey. Let's, let's sit in a time capsule here today. Let's sit in a time machine today. And let's turn the lever and let's turn it back to billions and billions and billions and trillions of years. Let's turn it back before the earth was even formed. Let's turn it back before the galaxy was even the first atom of the galaxy. You know, the, the, um, there's a scientific um, explanation or a scientific theory that saying the world is like a big bang. That somewhere, way, 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 million, billions, oh, I don't know, even can't even think about it. Something happened and something exploded. And then the, uh, it is expanding since then. And you know, that's technically true. Because way back then, God spoke it. Amen? And it happened. So, there, so technically, the theory of the Big Bang, that at some spark, somewhere, the universe started and expanded. Now, scientists say, well, we don't know. But we know who it was. He spoke it. Eternal Father. This great spirit. Amen? So, so what has happened that we... Let's, let's get into this time capsule. Let's pull the lever. And let's... Get back way, 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 way before the Big Bang even took place. Way before all these molecules or anything ever existed. And there was this being. We can't even say he was God because he had nothing to worship him. He wasn't even God then. Now that might sound sacrilegious, but this is the truth. A God is an object of worship. He had no angels. He had no uh, men. He had no one to worship him. He was there, just there existing. So let your mind, think about your mind. Let's go back. So there we are in this time capsule and we are there looking and we see in the supernatural being just existing there. There was no stars, there was no moon, there was nothing. Let's say it was like light. He was just existing there like, like the, the, the air that is all around us and, 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 but he was like white light. He was there like, you know, and there he was, there's there. But in him, he was brooding. That means that in his mind, in the back part of his mind, if we could say he had a mind, I mean, I'm, I don't know how we can explain the supernatural being. So you will understand that people say Trinity, God, God the Father, God the Son, God the whole three gods. No, it is not. It is this great supernatural being that has unlimited power, infinite. You, your mind cannot even think about how he could think. You know why people say three gods? Because they think in the terms of light, sound, time and matter. Taste, hearing, smelling, uh, seeing and feeling. That's how, they, that's how they think. So they try to restrict the supernatural being. I, let's say being for the time being. He's Father God, but we call him a being for the time being. Uh, 
that they try to restrict him in this, this dimension that we live in. This three-dimensional uh, plane that we live in. Amen? They try to restrict him in all form of thinking. But you cannot restrict the supernatural being. He existed. He's Father God. He's, uh, he wasn't Father God. He's this being. Let's say this being. And he's there. But in the back part of his mind, if you want to, even, if you want to put it in our thoughts, like how we would think, in the back part of his mind, he had certain attributes. And what these attributes were part of him. Remember this. And in his attributes, he wanted to have little ones. In his attributes, he wanted to have, he wanted to give birth to little ones that he could be, you know, he would be called Jehovah God. That means God with his family. He wanted to have a, wanted to have a family. He wanted to, be, he wanted to be loved. What do you think about this? This being that is out there and he, he, had, he had so much authority and power snap his finger like that and say, let there be. And it happened. He wanted to be loved. He wanted to have pleasure in seeing little ones. Think about you as, your, your, as a father. When you have that little newborn babe that you, you, you got out in the hospital and you held him. Think about that love that you feel. He wanted to have that type of love. But multiplied a billion, trillion times. He wanted little ones. And in the back part of his mind, he saw you and I. He saw you and I in the back part of his mind there. He formulated there in his mind. Remember, there's no time, you know. So it doesn't matter what, how long that might be. We don't know. But he's there and in his mind he's formulating. And it's, it's churning in him. And it's his desire. And he had, he had a feelings to be a savior. He want he to see, like, just like you see your little one fell and bruised his knee. You want to jump in there and grab your little one. And cuddle him. And put a little ointment on his knee and talk and cool to him. He wanted to do something like that. He wanted to see that, that if you fell to hold you up and bring you up and squeeze you to his bosom. God wanted all these things. It's his pleasure. We were created for all his good pleasure. Amen. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And remember now, he's this being. He's not Father yet. He's not God yet. He's not Jehovah yet. He's not Elohim yet. He's there way, way back in the part, in the part of his mind. He has thoughts that is formulating. He's thinking. He's, and it's bubbling up in him. And it's bubbling up in him. And it's bubbling up in him. And it's churning and it's churning and it's churning. And he's feeling this, this love and this love and this caring. Oh, he said, I want to be a Savior. I want to be a God. I want to be loved. I want to have pleasure in my little ones. I want to create little ones and create them and give them a nice place to, to live and I'm going to sit back and watch them and if they go to fall I'm going to put my hand and hold them up he had this chill in his hand think as you fathers think about it you mothers think about how you feel amen and some grandparents think about when you see a little one come you want to buy all the candy for them you want to buy all the cakes for them they like cro uh, cro uh, croissants croissants and you want to buy that for them or they like this little fudge and they like this you want to do it for them why because you want to feel that pleasure that is in you of love you want them come and hug you I want to hug you Papa like my granddaughters and gone back home now they hug you and they said Papa I love you I'm going to miss you Amen and how do you feel that's how God wanted to feel way back in the beginning this being this supernatural eternal one wanted to feel way back then pleasure what did the Bible say it is a father's good pleasure to give us the kingdom what he said, we all were created for his what? His pleasure. Amen. So all this was churning up in him. It was bubbling up in him. It was churning and churning and churning there in this being. And I don't know, <coughs> but we, we, we are watching now in this time capsule. We are watching this, this supernatural being. Oh, hallelujah. And we've seen what is happening to him. Amen. And we've seen these attributes. It's floating around all inside of him. And he's seen love. And he's seen joy. And he's seen peace. And he's seen virtue. He's seen knowledge. And he's seen temperance. He's seen patience. He's He's seen godliness. Amen. Hallelujah. He's seen uh, perfect love. Amen. Agapo love. And then that agapo love started to boil. And started to churn like a volcano inside of him. Agapo love. In this agapo love, it is all, it is all wrapped up in this agapo love. And it's churning. And it's churning. And it's churning. And then suddenly, hallelujah, out, out of this beam 
came for this very attributes, came for the manifestation of his attributes. Amen. And what was the manifestation of this attributes? The manifestation of his attributes is the logos, is his son Christ Jesus, is a form that came out of him. Amen. No, it is not separate from him, but is in a in a sense it was it was him himself. No, he could do this. Understand he's a supernatural being. He could be here, there, and everywhere. Amen. He's omniscient. He's omnipresent. He knows everything. He knows your life from beginning to end. So he could be in Tobago right now. He could be in India right now. He could be in Trinidad right now. He could be in Africa right now. He could be in the Ant- Antarctica and the Arctic Circle. He could be there all day at the same time. Why? He's a supernatural being. And yet he could be in the Holy Spirit. And when Jesus comes upon the earth, he's going to rest himself and abide in that body called Jesus Christ but he's still going to be eternal being he's still going to be eternal father that fills the whole universe so don't get bogged down and said well how could he be Jesus Christ how he could be the Holy Ghost how he could he is a supernatural being that you cannot understand I cannot understand because we compare him to physical realm we compare him to a physical position he could he can not he can uh, you know not stay in one place only he's all over he how could he live in you with a baptism of the holy ghost and how could he live in your pastor with a baptism of the holy ghost and how could he live in the 120 with a baptism how could it be how could this pillar of fire how could this great god divide up himself it is not understandable by a human mean by a human mind there's no way you can understand it he did it you just believe it Amen. But we're going to understand this by and by. He is supernatural God. And you know what? No one has ever seen him in that state. No one has ever seen him. Nor would we ever see him. Even when we come to the great millennium and come to the, the marriage supper of the Lamb and we come to, to, the, to the new Jerusalem, we will not see Father God in that state that he's in, that being that existed before the world was formed. But he will be dwelling in a body called the Lord Jesus Christ. He will be dwelling in us. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. Feel good about that. Praise God. So understand. Amen. So when people say, well, how could Jesus Christ be God? Well, you tell him you don't understand this being. You don't understand in the beginning God. The Bible says in the beginning was the word. So God was the word. Amen. So what? Let's go back now. Let's. We still looking over the banister in time. There, we have seen this, 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 uh, this, this uh, logos that came out of God. That is agapo love. This perfect love. This faith and virtue and knowledge and temperance and patience and godliness and brotherly love, brotherly kindness, kept off by perfect love, all dwelling in this little. It's like a pillar of fire. It's a light, like a halo. Probably something similar to what you see above there. Amen. Just rotating around in all eternity. Amen. And God was happy that uh, that he that he has no b- uh, b- give birth, amen, to something. Amen. And that's him. That now he could be in a tangible form. So now he could speak the word and the world will be formed. Amen. So let's read what the prophets say. Who is God? Cleveland, Ohio. Tuesday the 15th of August, 1950. Paragraph E13. Quote Brabranham. Now, Let's look who God is. Just a little bit. I'm feeling for something tonight. I'm asking God something. I believe He's going to grant it to me. I believe it with all my heart. Now you be in prayer. I can't speak until He speaks. Let's just take back and find out just a minute who God is. Amen. Let's look back at the beginning of time. This is a little picture I want to draw so you could get some conception of who this being is in our midst tonight that's moving amongst you. If you only could realize who that is, healing would be secondary or a minor thing to you if you could just see who he is. Now let's get back a hundred billion years and then take back a hundred billion years before that and just keep going back. No, here, not long ago, I was in California, Brother Bams, eh? there's an observatory. They have a glass there. They can see 120 million years of light space. How fast light travels and beyond that is still space. That's where we're hanging in that tonight. And like and I interject, like we just spoke about, we took a time capsule like, a time machine. And we are now where Brother Bams is talking about hundreds and billions and millions of years before the world was even formed. Continue the quote, Brother Bams. But let's think of it before anything was anything. 
there was God. He was in the beginning. See, let's let's see him and picture him in space. That's Jehovah we're speaking of. And watch how the Trinity of God comes to man just for a moment. Now there, that great space where no man can fathom in their mind beyond that space eternity. That's Jehovah God there. And we are taught in the beginning that the Logos or the Son of God went out of God. No, I do believe, I do not believe in eternal sonship. That's even radical to even mention such a thing. Eternal sonship. How the eternal sonship? It's been eternal sonship. How could it be a son? He had a beginning, see? Now first, sorry, he was God, Jehovah. And out to him, let's picture now, as a little drama as you could get it. Let's see coming out of space where there's nothing. Let's make it a little white light, like a, like a mystic light, like a halo. And that was the Logos that went out of God in the beginning. That was the Son of God that came out of the bosom of the Father. That was, that was what was in the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God and the Word was God. And the word was made flesh and dwell amongst us. In the beginning was God. Then out of God came the Logos. A part of God that went out of God. Amen. And Brother Abraham said you see him like a child. Playing at the father door. Amen. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Continuing the quote. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So uh, let's just read something here. And there now we see just like a child playing before the door. It was the Son of God, the Logos. And I could see him standing there. And he spake and said, let there be light. So who spake? The Logos spake. Brother Alman sometimes said it was like a body of fire, hands and feet and whatever. Take took that form like a theophany. Amen. And he spake what he said, let there be light. And there was nothing. But there was something happened. And an atom turned there and began to whirl around like this. In this way, the sun began to come into existence. Because he said, let there be. There's the authority. Where did he get it from? Brother Abraham said, I don't know. There was nothing to make it from. But he believed his own word and there was light. I can see a piece fly out of that. It's a meteor. After a few million years or a hundred million years, if you want to call it, and it's circled away, I see him standing there watching it. Amen? The Logos. And it falls down there and he stops it. After it falls a few million years. And he let it hang there in orbit. And there comes another one flying out of the sun. And it goes over there and hangs down. And he stops it. What is he doing? He's writing his first Bible. Notice. The human beings once looked towards the heaven. And he puts all the stars in the heaven. The zodiac. Starting off with virgin. The virgin. Ending up with Leo the lion. First coming of Christ. The second coming. Come by the virgin. Come down as the lion of the tribe of Judah. Amen. There he puts the Bible, his first Bible. Now look here, ancient days, the look at these things today. He got his Bible wrote, but he wrote it in the heavens first. That man would look up and realize that Jehovah the Creator lived, lived there. And then I can see him. He looked that way, see? Now I can see him speak this word hanging there as an icicle. Whatever it was, way, way away. And he moved it over here. And I can see this little light go out. Amen. Now we put, got two now. The Father. Out of the Father came the light, the sun. And I could see that light moving over there and pulled the earth over near the sun to dry out. And he began to raise the water, separating the land and the earth and the water and so forth. Amen. And then Brother Ramsey went on to create all the birds and the fishes and all this stuff. Amen. End of quote. Amen. So now you're getting a picture. What it was now, the logo spoke, let there be light. Amen. The logo spoke, let there be a, a, a light. And then what happened? A big ball of something came out. Amen. And out of that came a, a like a meteorite. Amen. A meteor. And then what it was, that was earth. And he stopped it. God stopped it at a certain time. Cool it down. And then another piece came and that was Mars. And another piece came was Venus. And there he created the solar system. Amen. God created, amen, that solar system. Praise. God, the eternal Father, in His Son, the Logos Christ Jesus. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. And what did the Bible say? We are flesh of His flesh. 
We are bone of his bone. We are spirit of his spirit. We are blood of his blood. So what happened? You were in that logos when he spoke the world into existence. Amen. So so if you are eternal, you were in him. Amen. So you have that spoken word that is in you. And when you come to maturity in this last age, the last age in this last day, just before the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ, you're going to, you're going to be transformed into that son of God, have power and authority upon this earth, just like the logos had power and authority, amen, to create, just like Adam had that power and authority to create. I just want to correct something. I know I've been saying there's two things about the coming and the appearing. No, I had it a little wrong side. It's the same thing. But I'm saying right now we have the appearing of the Lord Jesus Christ, the Holy Ghost, but His coming is when He comes through the sky. So I just, I, I have it, I had it he is coming as His Holy Spirit and is appearing. But it's the same thing. Amen. That Jesus Christ is going to appear in the sky. Amen. But His appearing is right now in the Holy Spirit that I call the coming. Amen. Where He comes down, the anointing is filling the people. Amen. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Praise God. Who is God? Cleveland, Ohio. Paragraph, uh, paragraph uh, 20. Now listen close. And then we are going to make a second man. So the first one was the Logos. Amen. You couldn't see him then. He was a, a second man was uh, like, a, was like a, a halo. Amen. Was like a halo, like this fire. I'm sorry, not seeing him as a man, but like this ring of fire. Now he makes a third man and he makes him like a little white cloud coming over, Brother Bram said. We can see him. Holy Spirit coming down and he's all man. That's the soul of man, eternal then. And after this man sinned, he marred that soul. Blackness, darkness came into it. And then God came down and lived in man, suffered with man to redeem man. And the Holy Spirit comes into man and drives that blackness away and sin away from him and brings him, bring, brings him back into perfect fellowship, a part of God. And now we, by the blood of Jesus Christ, who cleanses us from sin, we become sons and daughters of God. Who is God? The one that stood there and rolled stars out of his hands and rolled the worlds out of his hands and make the things which do not appear. Deity! And deity live himself, lives in us and lives in man. The creator that made heavens and earth lives in mankind. End of quote. So what we're saying, brother and sister, this great eternal Holy Ghost, Holy Spirit, eternal being, this being that existed before the world is formed is living in you. And what is living in you? Deity. What does 1 Corinthians chapter 6, I think it's 1 Corinthians chapter 6 that says, 6, uh, 16 to 18 says what? He said, I want to walk in you. I want to live in you. Amen. I want to walk in you. And you will become my sons and daughters. And I'll give you that power and authority to speak the word, a word into existence. It will flash like lightning. The third pole will be in you. Amen. You will be a God upon you. That's what he wants. That is his pleasure. That is what they are way back in his mind. You who are alive and remain. Do you know what power and authority you're going to have? In this last day, sickness will be nothing. The devil is not. The devil is a created being, brother and sister. You are your father, God. And I'm trying to show you who this, this being is. Amen. Way beyond that you could even think about this being. But you know what? Something, sister. You know what, brother? You are his son. You are his daughter. Amen. So you are like your puppy. You are like your father. You are like your God. Amen. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. No, oh, hallelujah. Praise God. God wants to come down and walk amongst us. Amen. When he created man, he used to walk, come down and walk with Adam and Eve. But it fell in the Garden of Eden. He couldn't do it. He wanted to come down in his glory. Amen. You know, remember in um, Moses' days, he tell, him, he tell him Moses, he said, I've chosen this people. Bring them over to the Arabian desert. Bring them over to Mount Sinai. Bring them over to Midian there. Cross the Red Sea. Bring them over there at this mountain called Sinai. And I want to come down and I want to talk to them. I want to, to speak to them. Amen. And what happened? There were all the children of Israel, two million of them, amen, with cattle and, and cows and goats and whatever and sheep and whatever all around surrounded this mountain. Amen. And suddenly this mountain started to shake. Suddenly this mountain started to quake. Suddenly a cloud descended on the mountain. Suddenly a trumpet sounding from the beginning to the so exceedingly loud. Suddenly the whole place started to shake and then God come down on that top 
upper and mountain in his in a in a part of his glory in his part of his he come he limited himself and he came down and he started to speak amen uh, probably the words he said he spoke he said thou shall have no other gods but me Amen. What happened? Thou on the earth started to shake. Thou shall uh, the whole uh, the mountain started to shake. Have no other. And it's, everybody was so scared because this great mighty being, this great Elohim, self-existent one that was there before the beginning, coming down upon this mountain. And oh, his glory is so mighty. His glory is so good. Amen. So so perfect. Amen. The place started to shake. And started, you know, the mountain started to quake. Even Moses himself, Moses who God spoke to, he met him up in the burning bush. Moses said, even me exceedingly, you know, to fear and tremble. Amen. Because God was coming down. Let's just read something what Brother Abraham say. In the rapture, you, Yuma, Arizona, Saturday, the fourth of December, nineteen sixty-five, paragraph one eighty-two. Quote Brother when God said back in Genesis 1, He said, let there be light. It might have been hundreds of years before there was any light. He said, let there be a palm tree. There might be an oak tree. Let there be a desert. Let there be a mountain. Let there be this. He spoke it, you see. And as long as it went out of His mouth in a word, it has to be manifested. It has to be. When? There were then one day He called His people out. And He spoke to a man named Moses. By a pillar of fire, a light holy, sacred fire. And Moses, the people wouldn't believe Moses. He said, bring them out to this mountain. And that mountain, the mount, that morning, the mountain was full of fire and flashing and thunders like that. And the people said, don't let God speak. Let Moses speak. See, lest we perish. And God said, I will not speak to them no more like this. But I'll raise them up a prophet and I'll speak through him. And what he says will come to pass. And then you hear it because I am with him. And he spoke that and he said that it would come to pass end of quote so right now that's what I'm saying God sent a prophet in this age you got to listen to this prophet because it was either this or God coming down in this mountain shaking the world and we all die or perish so instead of we dying and perishing this great mighty God coming down he sent a prophet to speak unto you do not bypass what this prophet have said or what the prophets have said in the Old Testament do not bypass it it is very important amen praise God could we ever imagine Amen. Praise God. What God really is. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. So there it was. Amen. This halo coming out of God. Brother said, Amen. Coming out of God, this halo coming out in space was the Son of God, the Logos. And it was in space moving around like a child playing at the father's door of a parent. And he drew in his mind what it should be. Amen. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Praise God, hallelujah. So then he made uh, you know, the angels, of course, and he made uh, you know the different stars and the moons and all this stuff. And he placed the planets in, in, in motion. Amen. And then let's read paragraph 34. And then after he got all his creation made, he said, Let us, plural, make man in our, in our plural own image. Now if God is unseen, if the Logos was in the form, just mythical speaking drama in the form of a halo, then it's supernatural. Then he made a man in his own image. John 4 said that God is a spirit and he had to make a spirit man and he brought it down there. There is deity cannot be seen. Deity is the supernatural. Then he brings it down from a sacred halo to a little white cloud, something that's more visible. That's man. He gave him rulership over the kingdom. And he governed the beasts like the Holy Spirit leads the church today. But there was no man to till the soil. Amen. Then he put man in the image of man on the earth, created him out of the dust of the earth. End of quote. Amen. So what we're saying... This supernatural God, this Holy Spirit, this Logos that came out of God, God still existed. He was like the air. What do we think the air? It's here, there and everywhere. Omnipresent, great eternal one. Amen. And He was existing. But now the Logos, He has condescended Himself into this Logos, this body of fire. And out of this body of fire, He was able to speak that word. And that word, the, the universe was created. The earth was formed. Amen. And then He came and created man. But when He created man, He created all of us back then. But we were not just created. We came out of that Logos. Amen. We came out of the Logos because you you cannot be created because you're eternal. 
If you're eternal, you cannot be created. Amen? So you came out of that logos because you have eternal life. Amen? You were not created. What was created? Your body was created. Amen? To come upon the earth. But you are eternal. Amen? Believe this, my brother and my sister. You are eternal. Why? Who's your father? Your father is eternal spirit. How could you be a beast? If your father is eternal spirit. How could you be a pig? If your father is eternal spirit. How could you be some evil thing? If your father is eternal spirit God. The devils were created. Amen. They were created to, 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 to uh, minister unto him. To Lord Jesus and they turn away. They were created to minister unto the logos. And they turn away and they rejected him. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Let's read the resurrection of Lazarus. Erie, Pennsylvania, Sunday the 29th uh, of July 1951, AM service, paragraph E36. Now notice, quote Brother Branham, now notice, that's where you are. That's what the matter with you Pentecostal people. It's my lot this afternoon to preach, and I have a right here on the platform, and I don't ever want to know any person from the flesh when I'm standing here. And that's the matter with the Pentecostal people. They don't recognize who they are. You are sons and daughters of God. You have in your hand, look, then Jesus, I was, it was one time quoted the scripture, ye are gods. Now look, deity. Um, Brother Branham said, I'm a part of Charles Branham because I was born from Charlie Branham, my daddy. I am part of him. I got a forehead like him. My hair was like him. I'm a small man like him. I'm in the nature like him because he's my dad. And I interject here, who's your father? This eternal being that existed Way before anything was formed. That's your father. Amen. Creative power. Never was sick. Never dying. Amen. That's who you are. A part of him. You are sons and daughters of God. Live like that brothers and sisters. Continue the quote. Amen. I'm in the nature like him. Because he's my dad. Now if we become in spirit sons of God. Deity dwells in the man. Hallelujah. Then you talk about blind eyes being open. They said nothing's impossible to God. God said nothing impossible with you. If you will believe it. Not God. But you. Deity is in man. End of quote. Hallelujah. Oh so God is living in you. Because you are son of God. You are daughter of God. Your papi is God. Amen. He likes certain things. You will like the same thing. Because that's your nature. And what's the nature of God? These seven attributes are the nature of God. They're the seven spirits of God. Just like you have a spirit upon you. Amen. You have a certain way you act. You have a certain way you do. You have a certain way you, you believe. Amen. You like your papi. Amen. You like your papa. You like your daddy. Abba, father. That's why you cry, Abba, father. Oh, hallelujah. You have the same attributes of him. You have the same attributes of faith and virtue and knowledge and temperance and patience and brother love and and godliness and brother love and brother kindness and charity which will descend upon you and cap you off amen as a, when you become mature in this world that's the attributes of your papa that's your attributes of your God that's your attributes of this great being that existed back there he wanted to be a father he wanted to be a son he wanted to be a creator he wanted to have little ones to love him amen believe in God Jeffersonville Indiana Sunday the 24th of September 1952, paragraph 128, quote, Brother Branham, quote, Brother Branham, now the senses are worldly instruments, you believe it? No, God can control them, I'll admit that, but they are not given us to contact our Heavenly Father, because He is not in human flesh, God is a spirit, and we contact Him by spirit, and through faith, believe in. Amen. You see, when I had my hair, Brother Bram said, I had wavy hair like my daddy. My daddy had close set eyes, deep blue. Many people say, you look like your dad, or you look like your mother. Well, I have a lot of things that's like my people. My old granddad built a tabernacle here. Some say, you're just like your granddad. You look like your granddad. You talk like him. You have a nature like him. What is it? The same strain that has been handed down through the generation that I have here. But you look like your parent. There's something about him. You see a little girl said, don't you look like her mother? 
She acts like a mother. You've seen people say that. No, if you are born of our heavenly father, God, who called these things which are not as though they were, they have got to be something in us like that. That's the reason that a real consecrated Christian, that's all out for God, looks to what God said instead of what you see or feel. That's the earthly man there. If we walk in the flesh, we can't please God. We walk after the Spirit. See? End of quote. Amen. So what it is? Amen. We contact God not by these, uh, you know, fleshly uh, seeing, smelling, tasting. No, we contact Him by faith. Because something inside here, something inside is pulsating. Something inside is crying out. Something is saying, oh, I'm like my daddy. I'm like my father. I want to walk like him. I want to talk like him. I want to please him in every way that I do. I want to speak like him. Oh, hallelujah. And you will because you are part of him. You are his son. You're his daughter. You're his child. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God. We're not even halfway through. Praise God. So we got to believe, amen, that you are son of God. You're daughter of God. And God can, your very nature, you have the very nature of your earthly father. Amen. Praise God. Believe in God. Jeffersonville, Indiana. Sunday, the 24th of July, I'm um, sorry, of February 1952. Uh, let's go down the last part of paragraph 134. Do you know what? How did God made the earth? This earth that you're sitting on this morning? People don't want to believe in faith. How did God made the earth? He spoke it. Amen. You see? He spoke. And the world came into existence. And this world this morning is the spoken word of God. And he believed his own word. Here it is. Watch it. And if God and you are an offspring of him and God is in you, you'll believe his own word. Though it can't be seen, felt, taste or anything. He'll believe it. See what I mean? For God in you will believe His own word. Is that right? Then you don't look at things that you see. Don't look at things that you see. I interject here. Don't look about a money problem. Don't look at a job problem. Don't look at a, all the problems that, oh, what are we going to do? We, can't, we don't have enough funds for the next three years. And what's going to after three years? We retire and, oh, the house going to collapse. And all. Don't worry about all those things. Put your mind on Him. Father God not going to see you go crazy. Father God is not going to see you lose the, your livelihood and be out in the street and a homeless. He owned the cattle on a thousand years. Now, we don't own the money. The Bible never say he owned the money. He owned the cattle on a thousand hills. The gold of the world is his. The silver of the world is his. Amen. He controls everything. Amen. Hallelujah. So believe it or not, brother, he's going to take care of you. You're his son. You have his daughter. Don't worry about that sickness that is bothering you. Call upon his name. Say, Lord, I'm tired of this arthritis. I'm really tired of this arthritis demon. I don't want this arthritis demon on me no more, Lord. I resist him. Leave you, arthritic devil. Amen. Speak to the devil. Amen. Hallelujah. Whatever. Parkinson's disease. I refuse to accept this Parkinson's disease. Tell him. Say, Lord, I refuse to accept this. I am not sick. I do not have Pakistan. I don't matter how, how much the, the body might look like it's shaking or whatever. I do not have it. I'm a son of God. I'm a daughter of God. I don't have heart trouble. Amen. Sure, my, my heart might feel fluttering. I look beyond that. I'm an eternal being. That living in a body of flesh. Amen. I'm an eternal being. Heart trouble. What is that? Diabetes. What is that? Amen. When your father lives in you. Amen. Just let the Holy Spirit that is in you filter. Just, deep, just sit in prayer quietly and say, Lord, you know this arthritic devil. You know this diabetic devil. He's trying to keep throwing it on me. I'm giving him back. He's throwing it on me. I'm giving him back. Lord, it's, Lord, I have enough of this, Lord. I'm looking, Lord, I'm praying that that Holy Ghost that is inside of me, that is living in me. May the Holy Spirit move to every fiber of my body. Every fiber. May this arthritis leave me. May this heart disease leave me. May the diabetes leave me. May this Parkinson's disease leave, leave me. Cerebral palsy leave me. Forgetfulness leave me. Let all leave me. I am healed in the name of Jesus Christ. Glory. You are son of God. You are daughter of God. Amen. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. Who is this God? Who is God? Eternal spirit that exists before the world was even formed. And you are his child. You are his daughter. You are his son. I don't care how you feel. I don't care what sin probably holding you back. I don't care what things might be holding you. It doesn't matter. Repent. 
Say, Lord, I was wrong. Lord, I lied. Lord, I cheated. I still forgive me, Lord. I repent. I'm your son. Change me and transform me. That's your father. If your little boy do something wrong and he comes and says, Pa, you know, I made a mistake. I stole five dollars. I want to return it. Please forgive me, Pa. What are you going to do? Take a whip and start to beat the child? No, you wouldn't. You said, son, I appreciate you know you're wrong. You know you confess. Don't do this again. That's all. That's what he's telling you. He don't want to take a whip and come and beat you when you come and confess. He loves you. Do you know how much pleasure he gets when you come to him and you ask him? When you, you know how much pleasure he gets? He sit down. Let's say he's sitting down in his little chair there and he's, he's waiting for you to come in his throne. He's sitting on his throne. And you're waiting and said, Lord Jesus, you know, things are not going too well, you know, Lord Jesus. You know, the crops are failing. The carailies are dried up and, uh, you know, the tomatoes and things. It's not doing too good, Lord. But I'm a, you make me a son upon the earth, Lord. Tell me. He would say, son, daughter, speak. Speak the word. The word belongs to you. You know, I give you a power and authority. Go ahead. He wants to do that to you. He wants to speak to you. Amen. But you got to talk to him. You got to come to him. You got to make sure your life is right with him. Amen. Show us the father. And it will suffice us. Los Angeles, California. The 19th of April, 1959 evening service. A Sunday service. Paragraph E13. Quote Brother Branham. And I would like to take four ways that you can see God. And prove that God is right here in this building. God in his universe. And God is in, is in his word. And God in His Son. And God in His people. I wish to take these four places to try to show you that this aged old cry, Who is God? Where is God? Could I see God? It's been a cry through all ages. Even Job, the most perfect man in this, his day, he wanted to know if he could find where he was and maybe go to him, go to his door and knock on his door if he could only see him. And End of quote. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. So even Job... And what has happened to us? We have a sacrifice that was laid by the Lord Jesus Christ. That you could come according to Hebrews, boldly into His presence. Come boldly into His presence. Say, Lord, I have this problem. It's me again, Lord. I have a trial, a problem that I can solve. I don't mean to worry you. But here I am facing something new. And help could only come from you. It's me again, Lord. He loves that. He loves when you cry unto Him. He loves you walking down the road and you speak to Him. Oh, great eternal spirit. I don't know what's going to happen. I'm going to do this. Oh, He loves that. He wants to give it to you. Watch what, he, what happens when you speak to Him. Watch what you happen. He will open the windows of heaven and give you, give you so much blessing that you can't even contain it. Amen? That's your Father. That's your God. That's your, amen. So we don't have far to go to see him. He's all around us. Just look around. He's with us. He, look at nature, for instance. He's all around. Amen. Oh, praise God. Amen, amen. So you know he is God. And one very important thing about him. He cannot fail. He cannot fail. And he cannot lie. If he said, I will bless you. If you come to me with a broken and contrite heart. He cannot go against his word. He cannot. That's his nature. He said, Ask and it shall be given. Knock and it shall be open. For everyone that ask it. I open up the windows of heaven for them. There are a lot of denominational people out there that they could pray more than you. And he loves them. He likes them. Sorry. He likes them. He will pour this blessing upon them. They cry unto him. Amen. Day and night. They fast. They pray. Denominational people. Denominational people. But there's a difference with you, my brother and sister, who believe this end time message. Amen. There's a difference with you who believe this word for the hour. He loves you. There's a difference. He loves you. Because there's something in you he placed before the world was even formed. There's something in you that was in the back part of his mind. He's hunting that little part of him. Amen. That is living in 16 elements. Oh, he cannot fail. He's God the creator. Amen. He will not lose not one. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, praise God. So, so let's look at an example. There was uh, Abraham sitting in the door of his tent or maybe under a tree there and looking down the road. Amen. The road, there's this dirt road or whatever. Looking down the road, just watching, taking in the sights and see what's going on. 
and um, you know they in the back probably cooking cooking dinner or whatever amen they were they, you know um, the servants and so on get, getting things organized and there was Abraham praying and meditating say oh great Jehovah God how wonderful you are you told me I'm gonna have a son Lord I'm waiting you told me I'll be blessed Lord Lord you know I, I, I walk to the length of this place I walk to the breadth. I'm looking for that city Lord that you say who's making builders you Lord I'm looking for that city I'm not seeing that city Lord Amen hallelujah he said, I'm looking and he's meditating and probably pull out a scroll that he got from Job, that Job wrote, amen. <clears throat> probably pull out a scroll that he not wrote or, or Noah wrote some stuff, amen. Amen. And he's probably reading that scroll. And then he looked down the road. He saw three men coming, amen, with staff in their hand, just walking. No big camels and backpacks and all this stuff, just walking, coming down. And he think in his mind, wait, this is a desert place. How these men have no water? They have no backpacks, they have no camels, they have no horses, and they and he's seen them afar off. And for hundreds and hundreds of miles, there's probably no oasis. How these men are walking just like that? And right away, he caught a revelation that this was great Elohim. Amen. And his angels coming down. He recognized that. He Because what? I'm thinking about, he's looking down the road. As far as I could see, it was desert. There was no houses. There was no, there was no uh, inns that they could have so They were probably... They were probably um, we have a, a problem with the battery. Praise God, Amen, Amen. Hallelujah. So, and he looked down the road and he see them, and he knows something was a little different about these travelers. Most everybody has their mules, has their doctors. I mean, so <laughs> have the mules and the camels and all that so forth, Amen. Many of them have that, but these people didn't have that. They were walking all alone, three people. And then when they came up to, they walked straight up to, to uh, Abraham. And what happened to Abraham? Amen, praise God. How, what happened to Abraham? He f fell down at the feet of the middle one and he said, Oh Lord God, would you stay? And uh, may I prepare something for you to eat? And all this stuff. And, and, and the man said, Yes, go ahead. There were three men. And who they were? They were the Lord God of heaven and his two angels. Let's just read a little bit here. And what happened? They ate, they ate bread and they ate the flesh and they drink milk and they ate cornbread and they ate butter. Abraham, amen. And they stood as strangers, of course, and yet they knew about Sarah. He said, Abraham, where is Sarah, your wife? How did he know all this? It was God on my... Let's read it. Conference, Shreveport, Louisiana. Friday, the 25th of November, 1960. Paragraph E71. Great powers of God. The great Jehovah standing there in this theophany, eating flesh, drinking milk, cornbread and butter. And then he said, Abraham, where's your wife Sarah? Now watch the same one saying, Thou art Simon, the son of Jonah. See, representing, that is the Lord Jesus, that he, the same God, brought him in, in a flesh born of a virgin. Now he dwells in a flesh born of the earth that has been sanctified to his blood. Oh, what a powerful statement. Oh, glory to God. Let's just, let's just read what the prophets say here again. He said that Jesus, it was, he was God himself, eternal. Elohim, the supreme being, was born and lived in a flesh uh, that was born of a virgin. And know what? He dwells in the flesh of the earth. You who have been sanctified by his blood. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. Continue to go. God above you. God over us. The pillar of fire. God with us. In his son. God in us. The Holy Ghost. Sure. The offices of God. Same God all the time. Different offices. Amen. Sure, it's God. God, the Holy Ghost. He is God. He is the one with us here tonight. End of quote. Oh, continuing. Praise God. Hallelujah. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. Oh, and what was it? Amen. It's great God Almighty, eternal spirit. Amen. Holy, holy, holy unto the Lord. Holy, holy unto the Lord. Amen. Praise God. You know, all these, um, all these, uh, I have a low battery in my, my phone here. Check the plug there, please. Honey. Praise God. We just worship in the Lord. Bear with me one second. My battery seemed to be going. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm not so sure why the phone, my phone is not charged. We don't want to miss. We have those logged on to, we have those logged on to, um, to the Facebook. I don't want to lose you guys. So, okay. 
Right, a little better. Praise God, amen. So now what we're seeing, that this man, amen, was what? Was great God of heaven, the Shekinah glory, dwelling in the human uh, human skin that came to Abraham. Amen. You hear what Brother Abraham say here? Oh, church of God, he's warning us. He said, rise up on the wings of eagle. Fly away from this thing. We are going to dig deeper enough into it. Get on it. How are you going to hide from when there'll be a blast a hundred feet in the ground for a hundred miles square? Well, the concussion will break plumb break through the lava but here's an escape in going up 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 that's it I'll raise him up in the last day. So we'll end of quote. What Brother Branham is saying. He said you can't escape. Understand who God is. Understand who you are. And then we all understand who Satan is your enemy. We'll preach on that on another day. Amen. So once you understand there's no escape. But except going up in the rapture. Amen. But uh, but let that Shekinah glory encircle. Now what is this Shekinah glory? Now remember the days when they were in the, in the um, going through the wilderness. The children of Israel were murmuring against, um, against Moses. They said oh you we feel you are you bring us here to die and all that stuff and God said you know what Moses move aside I'll destroy all of them and start again Moses said no Lord give him a chance and what he did he said the Lord said okay let all the tribes of Israel all the elders bring us their staff and let Aaron who represents you Moses bring their staff and put it in the, in, in the uh, before the ark of the covenant there amen amen hallelujah and, I, and I'll vindicate who I'm with and what happened that rod there all the rods you know were in the Shekinah glory the 12 tribe of Israel well how much it was plus Aaron's rod were there in the Shekinah glory they were all dead dry stick that they took up in the desert somewhere, cut down from an almond tree somewhere. But what happened? Aaron's rod blossomed, bloomed, bare leaves and fruits, amen, of almonds overnight, 24 hours. Who was this? Eternal spirit. You know, he could do anything. This supernatural God is being. Know who you're worshipping. Know who you're praising. This she kind of glory and all of the rest were dead stick that didn't Bear nothing. They died. But that son of God, amen, that prophet that God laid down there for the children of Israel, what happened to his, that rod? Blossom, it even bear almonds. 24 hours, overnight. What could God do for you, my brother and sister, overnight? Unveiling of God, Jeffersonville, Indiana. Sunday, the 14th of June, 1964, morning service. Quote, Brother Branham. Um, praise God. Paragraph 325. Outwardly it was nothing. But all that was is in the inside. Once inside of it. Then you see. How do you get in? in shaking hands? Joining? No. Born into it. Dying. Getting rid of your old badger skin. See? Your old self. Get into a new one. See? Forsake the old badger skin. The Shekinah light. Shekinah light does not listen. Listen ministers. Ministers I want you to listen to this. When once inside, I'm going to take this real easy. So you'll be sure to get it. Once inside the veil, after the Shekinah glory, the Shekinah light does not take the word of God and reveal Jesus to be a fortune teller. No. Like the denominations do. Mental telepathy, holy role of Beelzebub. No. The Shekinah doesn't reveal him that way. Of that. But the Shekinah glory ripens the seed that's promised for that hour of the word showed him to be the still the lily of the valley. It brings forth that seed, the lily of the valley, the bread of life, the Alpha and Omega, the same yesterday, today and forever. He is the believer's portion. The Shekinah glory reveals to the believer he is the same yesterday, today and forever. And what is the Shekinah glory? Paragraph 333. What's this Shekinah glory today? To break around beyond the veil. To see who God is standing before you. See who God is standing here before us. The pillar of fire. The great supernatural being I interject. We before the human. Anyone was even created or formed. End of quote. Oh blessed be the name of the Lord. Who is this Melchizedek? Jeffersonville, Indiana. The 21st of uh, February 1965 evening service. Sunday. Paragraph 40, quote Burbanum, and that's what God did. It's the same God all the time. God in the form of the Father, the Spirit, the pillar of fire, the same God was made flesh and dwelt amongst us. He morphing brought us out so he could be seen. And now that same God is the Holy Ghost, Father, Son, Holy Ghost. Not three gods, three offices, three acts of one God. Amen. Praise God. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. So it was one God, act, end of quote, acting by this Holy Spirit. 
Continue. Who is this Melchizedek? Paragraph 46. Now in the beginning, God dwell alone with his attributes. And I interject here. Who was his attributes? You and I. You and I were sitting there in his attributes. Amen. That's his thoughts. Amen. Now in the beginning, God dwell alone with his attributes. As I spoke this morning, that's his thoughts. There was nothing. Just God alone. And he had thoughts. Amen. Oh, blessed. And notice, those who have tonight eternal life was with him in him, in his thinking, before there ever was an angel, star, cherubim, or anything else. That's eternal. And if you have eternal life, you always was. Not your being here, but the shape and form of that infinite God. Amen. Shape and form of that infinite God. Praise the name of the Lord Jesus. Praise the name of the Lord. So that's what it is. Hear what he says. Tonight, if you have eternal life, you were in him. You were in his thinking. Before what? Before an angel. So before Lucifer was formed. Before any one of these angels were created. Amen. You were in him. Before any cherubim, cherubims, or anything else. So challenge Satan. You know who you are. You know who you are. You know you have the Holy Spirit. You know you are Son of God. You know you're following this prophet's message. You know you're following the scripture. You know your life is right. You know you please God. You have a good communication. Stand up to Satan. Say, Satan, let me tell, let me tell you something, devil. I was not created. You are a created being. I was there with God before you were even formed or even created. So get away from me, you filthy spirit. Leave you, you come against my father. I'm standing with my father because I'm, I act like my father. I speak like my father. Recognize who I am, Satan. I'm a son of God. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. Praise God. Amen. End of quote. Hallelujah. He in the beginning, his attributes. Amen. Hear what Brother Branham say. Paragraph 54, who is this Melchizedek? Now we find him, the great eternal being, at the beginning, his attributes, and now you were with him then. And then, when the book of life comes into view. So wait, am I thinking about something here? So before an angel was formed, he had a book of life, of, it, uh, of uh, the, uh, the Lamb's book of life, he had a book, and he put us there in that book of life, before an angel was even formed. Before the foundation of what the Bible say, The lamb was slain. Amen. So the lamb was slain way back then. He saw way down the road. To be a savior. He slayed the lamb. Before the world was even formed. And so the book of life. Which was you and me. In word form. Written word form. Amen. What, what did the Bible say? In the beginning was the word. In the beginning. So when the logos came out of him. The book of life. And then the book of life came into view. That's you and I. Amen. Written in there. Oh, what a revelation. What an inspiration. Continue the quote. Paragraph 54. You were there in his attributes. Now, you don't remember it. No. Because you are just a part of his life. You are, you are a part of God when you become a son and daughter of God. And when you, came, you are part of God before the world was even formed. Amen. You only come to know him. Amen. Praise God. Hear what Brother Abraham say. Hallelujah. And his first being was spirit, God, supernatural, all right, the great eternal. Second, he began to form himself into his flesh in a theophany. It's called a word, a body. And then in the state he was in, he met Abraham. I was called Meshezedek. He was in the form of a theophany. And we've got to get to that and prove to it in a few minutes, the Lord's willing, that he was the word. Now a theophany is something that you could not really see, but it could be right in here and yet you cannot see it. But Abraham says like the television waves and so on. And as so it is what Christ is here. The angels of God are here. And someday in the great millennium to come, it will be just more real than television or anything else because they are here. So what Brother Abraham is saying? The angels of God are all around us. The Holy Spirit is all around us. The messengers of God, the angels of God are around us. Amen. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. So that logos that came out of God, you are part of that logos. I have to skip a, a few more co uh, quotes here. Show us a father. Paragraph 65. Let's read straight down to 65. Amen. And, and when he made everything that looked nice and good to him, he said, let us, plural, make man, plural, in our image. What was he? There was a supernatural being. There's the one that could not be seen. God the Father never was seen. Never will be seen. He's all nature and he's here. 
And there he is. And now here is the Son, which is the Logos that went out of him, made in his image, a supernatural being that went out of him in the beginning. Let us make man our own image. And after he made man in his own image, he made a supernatural being. Yes, indeed. Genesis 1.28, read and see if that was right. And then he made man in his own image. He had a rule over the beast. He led the beast around like the, the Holy Spirit supposed to lead the church today. That's right. He led the church around. See? Amen. And there was no man to till the soil. So he created a man out of the dust of the earth. That he could have made him like a monkey or a foot like a bear. I don't know what he did. But he put him in five senses. And he put his spiritual being a supernatural being that was called man, that third person of the Trinity, Holy Spirit into mankind. That's right. That man, and he made him in his own image. End of quote. Amen, amen, amen. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. So what happened? Is that, I mean, we could talk about when God moved upon the face of the deep and darkness was upon the face of the deep in, in uh, Genesis chapter 1 Amen verses 1, 2, 3 Amen and God moved upon the face of the deep and all that stuff we'll talk another time of what happened there was a, a war there was a, a war in heaven it went down to earth we'll talk about that on our next day about what happened before Adam and Eve came upon the face of it before he created now if you notice in the Bible he created Eden now Eden was a place and he identified where Eden was, where the rivers was and it, Eden went all the way down to Ethiopia and all the Africa, all that area. Amen was Eden. Amen. But there was a difference. Amen. Where, where, there was where um, uh, Abraham, I'm sorry, where um, Adam and Eve lived, where they took care of the garden when they became flesh. It was where? It was the Garden of Eden. God planted a garden eastward of Eden. Eden was a whole place that he created. Right? Amen? But then on the east of Eden, he planted a garden. So the garden of Eden is a little different from Eden itself. The garden of Eden was in Eden. Amen? That's what the Bible says. Amen? And God was happy. Amen? And when he saw all this, he was, was well pleased. And what took place? Amen? Hallelujah. Oh, praise God. Amen? What happened? Adam and Eve fell. This beast that was like a caretaker in the Garden of Eden also. That was to help Adam. He was very close to Adam and Eve. His, uh, this beast's whole family was all close to Adam and Eve. The beast had a number of wives, you know. He was a beast. He was a, like a bull who have many cows. Amen. He was like a ram goat who had many ewes or a male sheep. Many, many ewes, you know. And he believed this. He didn't feel that it was a bad thing to have many wives. God allowed that there. But he seduced Eve. Amen. He was a helper in the Garden of Eden to help take care of the garden. Amen. And, and so he was close to Adam and Eve. Amen. And he got Eve separated. I don't know how long it took before he seduced her. Amen. We could talk about it on another day. But what happened? Eve fell. And Eve realized she made a mistake. Amen. So let's, re let's just read something very interesting that's going to kind of blow your mind a little bit. But the prophet said it. Show us the Father, and it will suffice us. Cornersville, Indiana, Wednesday, the 10th of June, 1953. Uh, paragraph E66. Now, here, listen, this is important. Amen. And he went, and quote, Brother Branham, and he went around, then he made him a helpmate. And the first thing you know, sin came into the world. And I can look at all of that that morning when God stood there before Adam and Eve, and they sinned. Of course, they tried to make him themselves a religion and dodge around, but it wouldn't be no good. Now listen closely, please. Amen. Let's listen. Hallelujah. Please, this is important. Of course, they tried to hide themselves. Now God said, Where are you, Adam? And Adam answered. And he covered up with fig leaves. But his fig leaf religion didn't do any good. That's right. And then the first thing you know, God went out and got some skins. In order to get skins, he had to kill something. And he had to kill something to make a religion. And brother, your old cold formal creeds ain't going to do any good. God killed something on Calvary, his old son, to cover up sin. Now paragraph E67. Now could you imagine God throwing back in them bushes there an old pair of bloody sheepskin? Here comes the most beautiful woman ever lived in the face of the earth, wrapped up. Her blonde hair hanging down her back like that. Don't, don't even know she was naked before. And this old bloody sheepskin around her. The blood running down her beautiful form. 
and there Adam the same way, his big manly shoulders and the sheepskin around him, and he and he and he couldn't stand, and he couldn't stand no more naked. Amen. He was in shame. He got an idea of what it was. You can have yours, but all right. Now here what Brother Ramsey. Here comes the most beautiful woman ever lived on the face of the earth, wrapped up, her blonde hair hanging down her back like that. So he was a blonde. He was a blonde. Amen. Praise God. So <laughs> that's Abraham spoke this thing. He probably was there. God bring him back in time and showed him. So amen. So just the same. They had sinned and it separated themselves from God. And there they stood before God. And look, Adam, because you listened to your wife instead of God, I took you from the dust and dust you will return. He said, curse be the ground for you. Creepers and thorns and so forth will grow up and on and on. And he said, Eve, because you listened to the serpent, you have to listen to your husband now. Amen. And serpent, because, uh, you know, here what Brother say. And he said, serpent? No, he wasn't a reptile then. He was the most subtle of all the beasts of the field. And he said, curses you. And he took his legs from him and put them on his belly. And all the days of his life, thus shall be his meat. And he shall be hated. Amen. Now, Brother Abraham said, Adam was not deceived. The Bible says he walked out with both eyes open. Eve was what was deceived. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. So you see what the Bible say. Amen. And God had mercy upon them. Amen. He promised a savior. But he wanted to be a savior. So he allowed it to happen. He could have stopped everything. But he wanted to be a savior. He wanted to be a God. He wanted to be a creator. He wanted to be a healer. Amen. And he saw what, how man would fail. He gave man that, uh, uh, the authority of a free moral thinking agent. And man fell. Amen. Show us the father. Paragraph 69. Now look. When man was made in the image of God, he did not fall. When he was made in the image of man, he fell. When he was made in the image of beasts or out of the dust of the earth, that's when men fell. Praise God. Amen. End of quote. So you understand, when man was created in God's image, he didn't fall. He was perfect. It's only when he came in flesh. Now his soul, amen, was eternal. Your eternal spirit cannot fall. But you, because you are born in sin and in shape in iniquity, we have to confess that yes, we are, we are inhabiting a body that is called, that, that causes us to lie and to steal and to cheat and to do wrong things. Amen. But blessed be the name of the Lord. He is the same yesterday, today and forever. And He loves us. Amen. He wants us to bring us back to His kingdom. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. So the Shekinah glory must come upon you. Amen. Quicken your body. Amen. It's the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Praise God, the son and daughter of God. So try to understand who God is. Who is this eternal being? Amen. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Praise God. Amen. Let's read. Show us the Father. Paragraph, um, paragraph E70. We almost uh, done with uh, just a few more quotes. God is in His universe. God is in His word. God is in His Son. Now let's see. When He was here on earth, you say it was the Son? Yes, sir. When He was here on earth, He said He was God. He looked like God. He acted like God. He healed like God. He died like God. He rose like God. He was God. God the Son. And when God the Father came down and dwelt in the Son, Jesus Christ, and they in unity were one. That's what it was. That was God speaking. And Brother Ram said, and I said the other night, when God was out there on that ship, right, the woman said, why he was that little old boat tossed around like that? It was the man that was sleeping. But it was God who would stop the waves. It was the man who was crying, going to Lazarus' grave. But it was God who raised the dead. The man Christ Jesus cried. He was a man. But God that was in him speak to the dead and lived again. That man that was in Christ Jesus himself. He could hunger and want to force something to eat around the tree. But the God man that was in him would take five biscuits and feed five thousand. What I'm trying to say here, brother and sister, I interject, is that the same, this is an example of a true seed of God, an example of a true manifested son of God, you to be like Jesus oh because your father is in heaven your father is eternal spirit your father and you're going to walk like Jesus you're going to walk like his son, amen praise God and notice then again Amen. God was in His Son, reconciling the world to Himself. He's not going to let anyone tell Him He was a philosopher, He was a good man, He was a prophet. He was God. Exactly who He was, I believe, in His deity straightly. And notice then again, I want you to see God in His people. 
Oh my, I think of the old prophet Elijah. He had died and gone, and the spirit, and, the, and uh, Elisha is talking about it. They had a dead man one day, packing them along, and they laid his dead body, on the, uh, his dead man on his body, and the dead man came off to life. Not because it was Elisha, but because God was still there. He, amen. And it was Elijah with that day that baby got sick, and Elijah took his own body, and laid upon the dead child and come to life. It was God. And when they come back there, on the day of Pentecost and 120 had got into the upper room and they were so scared they kept the doors fastened and the curtains pulled down but when God had been on the outside and when there was a sound that come from heaven like a rushing mighty wind and filled all the house and there were certain cloven tongues of fire set upon them God in his people now end of quote now how brothers and how good God do that I don't know but this is a supernatural being you talking about that rolled the words of his arm. He could do anything. He could be here, there, and everywhere. He's not limited by light, sound, time, and matter. He's eternal spirit. That's who God is. That's who he is. And he's your father. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, the guide. Amen. Praise God. Jeffersonville, Indiana. Sunday, the 14th of um, October, 1962. Evening service. Paragraph 34, quote Bob Branham. And when the church reject that, the Lord Jesus today, how can we ever expect to go to heaven? When the Holy Spirit was sent to us for a guide, we'll take some cardinal or some bishop, some general overseer or somebody like that to guide us. When the Holy Spirit has come to guide us, now the Holy Spirit always speaks the word. I've got many things to tell you. You can't understand it now, but when He, the Holy Spirit, comes, He will guide you to it. That's the reason the coming of the seals, at the finishing of the seventh seal, the mystery of God should be finished. To know who God is, how He is, how He lives, His nature, His being. And I interject here, it has to happen this age. They could not have known about it all the past ages. Even Paul and everybody else, no one could understand it. But you will understand who this God, great God of heaven is. Let me read it. And at the finishing of the seventh seal, the mystery of God should be finished. To know who God is, what He is, how He lives, His nature and His being. You're supposed to be all the way up. And I talked to the, about the pyramid. All the way up to, to brother, love, brother, kindness and charity. Say you have to be all the way up here by that time. See? Bring us into the full statue of sons and daughters of God. A church that washed in the blood of Jesus. Eh, that's brought without money. Is paid for by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. And here we are. A guide. And he's God's provide guide. Provided guide. And how we are going through a wilderness. And we are on a road somewhere. And we can't get along without this guide. And dare anybody to try to substitute any guide. Any other guide. If you do, he'll take you off the line. The guide knows the way. And who is this guide? I interject. Eternal Father. Seven spirits. Amen. Of the seven church ages. Amen. This guide knows the way. He knows every age, inch of the way. He knows every thought that's in your heart. He knows everybody that's here. He knows who you are and what you have done and all about you. He's God's guide. The Holy Spirit will reveal things to you and will tell you things that He's heard. Can repeat your words right back and say what you said. Amen. Tell me what you have done. Amen. What you could do and what you're doing. A guide. The correct guide and he'll guide you to all the truth and the word amen end of quote so let this holy spirit lead you why how you know it's leading you because you're a son you are his daughter claim your possession claim your inheritance don't be ashamed if you make a mistake he will give you a little spunk and he'll bring you back you are his son he will not kick you down to hell amen you make a mistake don't be afraid to ask if you ask him too boastfully then he will tell you no son you shouldn't act that way he will talk to you as his child. You as son, ask. The child be given. Christ is the mystery of God revealed. Jeffersonville, Indiana, the 28th of July, 1963. Paragraph, uh, is a Sunday. Paragraph uh, 239. Quote, Brother Branham. So it's Christ expressing himself in the individual. 
whether he's intellectual, he doesn't know his ABCs. Half the apostles didn't know it, but they know Christ. They never been, they never taken heed to Peter and John, knowing that they've been out of some seminary. They said they have taken heed and noticed that they have been with Christ when they healed the lame man. See, at the gate, they know that they had seen Christ. They had been with Christ, and the new birth is Christ. A rev is a revelation. God has revealed to you this great mystery. That's a new birth. That's what you're going. That's where what you're going going to do when you get all caught up in a group together where the revelation is perfectly in harmony and God expressing it through his word by the same actions the same things that he did making the word manifest oh if the church could only knew his position and I interject knew your position as sons and daughters of the supreme being that existed before the world was ever formed if you know who you are if you know your position listen what Baba Ram say if, oh, if the church only knew its position it will one day then the rapture will go when it knows what it is Amen and Baba Ram say that's the truth end of quote so what you got to know your position what is your position your position is a son and daughter of God your position is, you come from God, you're going back to God. Your position, you have eternal life. You will not give me eternal life as such. Amen. You will have eternal life way before the foundation world because you are in back, the back part of his mind. Amen. Eternal life is that you have no beginning, no end. Amen. You are part of God. And if you understand your position, if you understand who God is, then the rapture will be ready to take place. Amen. Shall we stand? Amen. Praise God. Shall we pray? Father God, we have come to the end of our broadcast trying to uh, understand, Lord, by revelation who you are. O great eternal spirit, may you come down, Lord, and vindicate the word to the people. I've read your prophet word, Lord. They have vindicated word that you, Lord, you had the prophet say it. And I've spoken back to the people exactly, Lord. So, Lord God, by your word, by your promises, you said that you will come down and vindicate the words to the people. May signs and wonders and miracles happen to these people, Lord. Let them understand, Lord, that they are sons and daughters of God and grasp that healing. Speak into the devil or know that, they, that the devil is a created being. Hear the prayer of your people. Let this week coming forth be, Lord God, one of signs and wonders and miracles taking place that it will speak the word. It will flash like lightning, Lord. Help your people out of the trials they are in, the tribulations they are in. Know that they are sons and daughters of God and they are just like their papa. They talk like their papa God, which is you. They speak like you. They are bone of your bone and flesh of your flesh. O oh, great eternal spirit, Lord Jesus, come upon them, Lord. Help them in the week to make the right decisions, Lord, to do the right thing, to follow after you, Lord. Grant it, O oh Lord, we pray in the name of Jesus. Bless the pastors and the ministers and whoever may listen. Lord, quicken the word to them. Bless the people. Bless us all as we ask it. May, Lord, the healing take place, Lord. May a revival take place, Lord. May your Holy Spirit move among the people, Lord, in this time of trouble. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. It is Jesus. Yes, it is Jesus. It is Jesus, deity, in my soul. For I have touched the hem of His garment, and His blood has made me whole. One more time. It is Jesus. Yes, it is Jesus, it is Jesus in my soul, it's dating your soul, oh, for I have touched the hem of his garment, and his blood has made me whole so the Lord bless you and keep you the Lord may he rise up with healing in his wings upon you 
May He cover you according to the Psalms 91. May you be blessed. May you be prosperous. I pray, and as we should meet again on Wednesday, my apologies for not the last two service. Amen. But we're going to meet again on Wednesday, should the Lord tarry. Amen. Be prayed up. Pray for this ministry. Support this ministry. Amen. And let God lead you and guide you to, you know, in your way. Amen. On your, as you walk this narrow way. May God bless you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen and amen.